So today I want to talk about gravitational fields and how to represent, represent them as presented in the A-level physics syllabus. So this is basically a gravitational field. It's very similar to electric field, what we saw before. Um, this is a radial field for Earth. This is a uniform field. Uh, it's something that we will experience every single day. So basically, uh, we just represent them and it has all the same rules that we've seen before in an electric field. Um, these arrows, they're in the direction of uh, the force on a body of mass placed in the field. So basically, let's say there was a field created by Earth, and let's say maybe an astronaut was here. The force on him is going to be pointing towards the Earth because out of common sense, he is going to accelerate towards the Earth, right? So yeah, it's going into whatever is creating the gravitational field. And we can see that like this as well. So when we're standing on the floor, if you are a person on Earth, then you would probably know that you are attracted to the floor and there is a force that pulls you down onto the floor. So because this is um, the direction of the force acting on a body of mass placed on the field, it's going to be downwards into Earth. It's not going to be coming out from Earth. It's going to be going into Earth. Now, if this was wrong, and if, let's say, the law was that it was the direction of the force on the body be that is creating this field, then it would be a completely different uh, direction, right? So what is creating the field on Earth is Earth. And so it's going to be in the opposite direction. But no, it is basically the direction of force on the body of mass that's placed on the field. And therefore, it is always going into Earth. It's going into the sun. If you talk about the solar system, it's going into the black holes, uh, whatever is causing the field. Um, if the field lines are further apart, then they're weaker. So this is pretty obvious. We can see that in a radial field, the closer you are to Earth, the closer together the lines are, which means the stronger the gravitational force is, and the further you are away from Earth, the further apart the field lines are, and this is why we can prove that uh, the field is less strong when you're far away from Earth. As you are on the surface, this really doesn't matter because you're just so small compared to the radial field lines kind of spreading out over very, very long distances. And therefore, we say that when you're close to the surface of the Earth, we are in a uniform gravitational field because these changes are too gigantic for us on the surface to even realize. And that's why Earth behaves as a uniform field. And, you know, if you go to the 27th floor of your condominium, it's not going to feel, you're not going to weigh any less than you are going to weigh on the ground floor because the, the distance is just so small in comparison to this gigantic radial field. Um, so assume that when you are on the surface of the Earth, we have a uniform gravitational field. Earth also behaves as a point mass, and what that means is that the mass is basically all concentrated as a point. So, um, if we have Earth like this, and uh, this might not be true for, for example, uh, things that are on the surface of Earth. But when we're talking about, you know, this is the moon, and we're talking about the force that they're exerting on each other, when we have we have to treat like how gravity works, we will always put Earth and the moon as well as a point mass. And so if we were to draw field lines like this, you know, like that, and obviously it would be going into Earth because the moon is attracted to the Earth, Notice how we were drawing them from the center point of the Earth. That is because Earth is behaving as a point mass for objects beyond the surface of the Earth. And for objects on it, we can literally just treat it as a uniform field. And then we get the introduction to gravitational strength, which is denoted by G. So what, it, what it's defined by is gravitational strength G at a point is the gravitational force exerted per unit mass on a small object placed at that point. So if we had Earth, and let's say this was me, um, and you know we could, as we just see, saw, represent the field like this. Well, the gravitational strength is basically how much force 
it actually exerts on me per kilogram newtons per kilogram and let's say i was 53 kg then uh, g then the amount of force on me would basically just be g times 53 that would be the force on me so uh it is common sense from this definition that the the definition of g would basically be force divided by mass um the g of the earth is 9.81 newtons per kg as we've probably already seen before we know that force as we've seen in the previous video um, is basically g m m divided by r square and g is a universal gravitational constant so since um g is f divided by m g is this entire thing divided by m that's what g is and we can cross this out right this is the smaller body that is being attracted by the field this is the mass of the bigger body that is creating the field aka this is earth for us um, and therefore, we can get this very simple equation of G is GM divided by R squared. So we have seen that this gravitational strength does not depend on your own mass. It does not depend on the body that is attracted, but it only depends on the body that is creating the field, the mass of the body that is creating the field, the separation from that body, which is also inversely proportional, um, which is why we can say that the further you are away from Earth, the weaker the gravitational uh, field is. And it also depends on this G, which is it might be different if you go to a different universe, right? But within our universe, this is all the same. A few things to note is that G is not a constant. As I've said before, it will obey an inverse square law with distance. So the further you go away from it, the lower it becomes and actually becomes lower by, you know, a square of how much you've gone further away with distance. G has units um, kg divided by meter squared. Kg divided by meter squared. And this also equals uh, meter per second squared. Why is that? It's because acceleration is... Um, oh, hold on, sorry. This is um, n divided by kg. So G has units n divided by kg, and this equals meter per second squared because acceleration is force divided by mass, and that is n divided by kg. So this, because that is G, we can also convert this directly into meter per second squared, and hence G is also the value of the acceleration of free fall within this field that is created by this certain mass m and so that's it for gravitational fields and also the gravitational field strength which is denoted by this carpe g thank you for watching